Hey y'all, welcome to Sniper's Homestead. I'm Zach. And I'm Jim. And we wanted to show you all a little of our outdoor cooking. Um, I love cooking outside, either on the Blackstone or on my charcoal grill or in the smoker. You know, uh, fire with the um, <clears throat> the grate or the cast iron. We're, we basically cook every day outside. We really do. Yeah. In the spring and summer, we're going to be outside unless the rain forces us to eat, cook inside. Yeah. Um, and that's usually because we're canning so much in there, like we don't want to be in there. <laughs> um, but we love it. Today was hibachi night. Yeah. So we had uh, teriyaki salmon and chicken with some fried rice and then some uh, hibachi styled uh, veggies. So Brussels sprouts, uh, bell pepper, carrots. Onions. And an onion. It's basically what we had on hand. Those things aren't necessarily the greatest together, but it's what we had. That's so right. We made it work. Hey, it tastes fantastic because <laughs> yeah. it's hibachi. Um, but yeah, we're going to eat this and then we'll get right into the video. Yep. My goodness, this weather is something else in it, babe. Yeah. It has hot been and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold. Windy, cloudy, <laughs> never sunny. It's just been absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. Um, but we wanted to walk around and show you all a couple things because what did her not do here? It's not a hobby, it's a way of life. Yeah. It's survival. Um, we do have obviously a lot of fun doing it. That was the main purpose of us doing this is having fun, enjoying our lives. Um, but we also have a bigger plan and a bigger purpose for what we do here. Yeah. Let's go show them. First of all, we have a tree limb yeah. down on a fence. <laughs> we need to get that taken care of. Yeah. These storms have been nuts. Yeah, we had a crazy one roll in. It was like the most powerful little thing I've ever seen since we've been in North Carolina when we yeah. went to the hurricane. It came in like a wrecking ball and just left. Yeah. Um, but there was a little bit of damage, but it seems that we have a tree limb down. Yeah. Hi, birdies. They're dirty birds. Everybody's trying to dry out. But yeah, we've got this big tree behind the new chicken coop and it broke. One of the limbs broke. That's a pretty hefty. Hey, more today. <laughs> Don't try to climb over the fence, people. I'm not as, uh, <laughs> as flexible as we used to be. Please don't go down like Gravy Karen. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, it's a pretty hefty limb. And I noticed it yesterday and I propped it back up because Zach was on a meeting. So it fell back down. So now we're going to take care of that real quick. But the chickens love this tree. They love to get up there and roost in it. And they don't leave, they don't fly out. They just hang out there. There's a little bit of honeysuckle in it, I think. I don't know what kind of tree it is. Oh, yeah, there's some right there. Yeah, it's pretty. I wonder if chickens like honeysuckle. <laughs> Y'all like honeysuckle, ladies? Maybe that's why they like the tree so much. I don't know. You may know if chickens like honeysuckle. <laughs> Do you get it? Got it. Got it. <laughs> it's a big one. Goodness gracious. You're welcome, lady and gent. One gent. Clooney. Have Clooney. we talked about Clooney? We haven't. So we have a second root, well, a second rooster in our rare bird group. Um, and he also has a little puff top, kind of like T-Bird does, yeah. but he's a little, little bit more slim. He's a spitz hobbin. Yeah, he's a spitz hobbin, so he's very salt and pepper, white yeah. with black. And so Jen and I was like, what are we going to name our new rooster? <laughs> and I said, it's got to do something with salt and pepper, yeah. like a salt and pepper hair, you know, uh, that middle-aged men get that I'm starting to get. I'm noticing them saying, get all kinds of gray <laughs> right here, uh, which I'll embrace it. I'll just rather have like, hair. Like the salt and pepper, like. <laughs> I just hope I have hair. It's, right, I mean, it's not in my gene pool very well. So <laughs> I will take it completely white if I have hair. Yeah. Uh, but anyways. I was like, who could we name him after with a nice salt and pepper look? Jim likes me says, Clooney. Clooney. George Clooney. <laughs> so our new rooster is called Clooney. Yeah. So we have Clooney and T-Bird now. And he is a nicer than T-Bird yeah, so, so far. far. He's not crowing yet. He hasn't really found his rooster self. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. But they're mad. supposed to be friendly. So hopefully it stays that way. If you're new here, this is our original rooster. And his name is T-Bird. <laughs> He's a Polish, and he, uh, he's got his little top knot. He used to be really friendly, and then he decided to become a jerk. So, it's okay. He's still, he's very nice to his ladies. He does treat them well. But he doesn't like us so much. What's up, T-Bird? T-Bird. <laughs> and for the record, he likes me just fine. Mm -hmm. It's her and some others that decided to come over here. Yeah, yeah, they mess with him and of course he ain't gonna like him, that's why. I was the first one he flogged for no reason. Yeah. 
I was, I felt something. I was going to get the eggs or something and he was at work and I felt something on my leg and he wasn't big enough to hurt. His, he's still not big enough. His spurs are like baby spurs. They don't hurt. Uh, but I felt something. I looked down and he was like jumping on me. I was like, what are you doing, dude? I just like kicked him off. <laughs> Poor T-Bird. He never stood a chance. No. <laughs> Look at these potatoes. We just did a garden walk a couple days ago and I feel like they've already grown like five inches since then. They are huge. And knock on wood, we haven't had a single issue with flea beetles or any kind of bug on a potato. So. They're all the way over here and hopefully it stays that way. Yeah. At one point we thought we had something dig in them, but it might've been the cat or something. I don't know, cause there's been no other issues. No, there probably. hasn't. <laughs> right, I'm made of wood. <laughs> uh, and they're stuck in between two electrical fences, one being the pigs, yeah. one being the chickens and guineas. And so guineas, they eat all the bugs. Chickens yeah. do good too, but guineas are 100% better. Uh, so maybe that is that helps out because yeah. it's not officially fenced in. It's just a rat surrounded by it. Yeah, we need to mulch them some more and heal them up. But we'll have to get town to do that. Get some right. straw. We'll get there. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully this weekend we'll get there because it's time. Yeah. We've just been so wet. Every pin is sopping and wet. Yeah. But we are adding straw and hay and all that good stuff to everybody's pan. Um, just something that you can't really handle a whole lot or really do anything about. Uh, it just. It gets wet and yeah. you adjust as needed. But here's pieces. Hi, pieces. How you doing, girl? You getting comfy? You bedding down? Hi. You just so got a, what, about a month and a half left for uh, some piglets? Yeah. Big mama. Better believe a mama. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> Slowly backing <laughs> out. <laughs> See you later. She is waddling, waddling hard. <laughs> waddling hard, big old mama. Here's the here's the crazy boys. What's that boy? Boys being boys. Backflip. Burr. What's that boy? Muddy. You got some fresh hay. You can't be too mad. Yeah. <laughs> so we're now headed to the back side of the pond, um, and. Her mom and stepdad Larry have been really working hard on cleaning this area out yeah. back here, and it looks amazing. It's fantastic. Um, because they want to pull their camper back here, which will be really cool uh, to be able to stay on the weekends and different stuff like that. But this is where Jed's house was supposed to be. Yeah. So look at this. It's like a whole new backyard. It looks really amazing. Gosh, it's pretty. That's beautiful. I love it back here. It's yeah. right, by the, right behind the pond. So you have the view of the pond and then our backyard and the greenhouse and everything and it's so pretty. Yeah. They've got a fire pit back here and they've been working on chopping up some wood and splitting it so that they can have their fires too. Yep. So it's going to be really fun once they get up here. It really is. And when we when it's nighttime and we have the lights on in our garden and it just glows yeah. out their front. So right behind us you can see our house there. Yeah. Um, it just glows up and it looks so pretty from this spot. Um, I really hate that Jed wasn't able to get no, back no. here. Um, which an update on his house, he's still in progress. Uh, they're doing electrical and plumbing. That stuff takes a little bit and making sure you do it right and everything. But once they get over those hurdles, he'll be moving pretty fast yeah. and getting in there. Yeah, the kids are very excited about this. Yeah. Little spot and having the grandparents here on the weekends, hopefully. It'll yeah, be nice for them. I'm excited about it too. <laughs> I like it. Why aren't you a big old bullfrog? <laughs> Look at you. Look at you, my goodness. Oh, no. he yeah. gone. So what do we mean by this is a survival and this is a way of life? Um, a lot of times when we look at everything that we do, um, it's unconventional, I think is yeah. one of the best terms Probably to say. Probably the best way to describe us is unconventional. <laughs> right. Um, we do things differently. We don't follow the book uh, on exact Unless process. It's farmer's almanac. Unless it's the farmer's <laughs> almanac. Uh, yeah, we don't follow the book on exactly on how to do. Yeah, Lordy day. Um, on exactly how to do homesteading. Um, there's a lot of books. There's a lot of ways that people say is the right way to do it. Um, but we're telling you any way can be the right way if it works for you. Um, we did a video yesterday that was about planting by the signs. Um, and we got a lot of interesting comments um, that I did not expect, um, especially if you know us at all. So a lot of people took it as it was like against religion. 
um, to plant by the side. Not a lot, just a few. Yeah, just a few. Um, understanding. Right, but I kind of wanted to clear up some things um, with that because planting by the signs and the moons is not against religion. It is part of religion. Right. Um, one thing that we have to remember is God didn't just create the earth and us. He created the moon. And he the created stars. the sun, the yeah. stars, everything that's around us that makes us able to live here, he created. Yeah. Um, so when we're planting by something he created, it isn't against religion. Um, and that is not a shot at anyone or anything. It's just explaining that we believe in Jesus yeah. and we are religious and it is important. But the biggest thing that ourselves and a lot of Kentucky and Tennesseans, that's what I Tennesseans. say. Tennesseans. Tennesseans <laughs> will relate to the Appalachian style of life isn't understood completely to everyone. Yeah. Um, and what I mean by that is this isn't, this is survival. We live this way to survive and to thrive and to know if everything went down, our lives won't change. We can grow everything that we want to grow to eat. Um, we had the land uh, to live off of. We have meat, we have dairy, we have plants, vegetables, fruits, all of that stuff. Um, and then also the outdoor wilderness skills yeah. to live. The skills is the big part of it. Yeah. You can have all that stuff, but not know how to do any of it and have to go to Google or YouTube. Right. Um, but it's ingrained in everything that we do. It's a way of life. Um, I don't know. It's hard to explain, kind of. It is. And, um, you know, if you've ever been to the Great Smoky Mountains, which is a very popular tourist attraction, um, you may have received glimpses into the lifestyle right. uh, to understand what we mean. It's front porch picking. Yeah. It's uh, not looking like you, you know, have money rolling out of you. Right. You're living in a pole barn. <laughs> um, you're living in a little cabin. You're doing something. You're minimalist on what you need and want. Um, you have your luxuries, but it's never anything to brag about. Yeah. Um, and your one and main only goal is to make sure that you and your family survive no matter what happens. Yeah. And it even says in the Bible, um, in Ecclesiastes 3, it's a fantastic read. Um, it's a whole lot longer than what I'm going to quote. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there's a time and a season for everything under the heavens that God made. He made the moon and the stars. There's a time to plant. There's a time to die, a time to be born. There's a time to harvest what you've planted. Mm -hmm. There's a time for everything. And, you know, you can take that out of context or not and say, you know, that it might not directly relate to what we were saying about you know, planting by the signs or planting by the moon. But if you look at it, I mean, that is what it's saying. Um, right. God created this beautiful earth for us to steward and for us to use. And he connected every single part of it so that we could use it in the best way possible. That's exactly right. And we have to understand that we were giving choice, choice on how to live here. The choices aren't made for us. We have to make the choices. Some beautiful little girl did her makeup. Isn't it pretty? <laughs> Lordy day, Ray Ray. Tell him hi. Hi. <laughs> God isn't going to make the choice for you. You have the freedom of choice to make the right and wrong decision. Um, it's up to us on which choice that we make. Right. Um, that's the beauty of our lives, our world, um, and everything about it. So we choose to live this way. Yeah. We choose to plant by the moons and the suns. We choose to be survivalist and minimalist yeah. and have a big old pile of chopped wood behind <laughs> us um, that we spend a Saturday on or working in a pond uh, to make sure that we can feel. Um, our weekends are filled of making choices to better our lives, to be more of a survivalist than anything else. Yeah, and also to set it up for our children, mm -hmm. for our children's children and our children's children's children. That's right. That's important. You know, this life isn't just about us and our hobbies and what we enjoy doing or don't enjoy. It's about setting up the rest of your family and generations to come with the best chance of survival. That's exactly right. And, you know, most of the time we're very middle, middleman, I guess you would say, yeah. you know, we kind of teeter on both sides of the stuff. I mean, it has nothing to do with not wanting to hurt the feelings of anyone. It's just, we see both sides of every world. Um, we ask you all to do the same in that aspect. But for this point right here, um, I got a bug. <laughs> I would, to me, this is the only lifestyle to live. Yeah. Um, and it's the only lifestyle to uh, thrive to be. Um, so if you're not on this path of homesteading to become 
survivalist and become living off your own land and living here and being able to survive completely, you need to be. Yeah. Um, there's no better time than right now to begin. I, it is not going to happen overnight. This is five years in the making, and we still got a lot to yeah. do. Um, we are We're just a small homestead. We're not a farm by any means, and we don't want to be a farm. We don't want to be the stainless steel farm. We just want to be what we are and be able to survive off of that. That's a really good topic to, to mention about farms versus homestead and what's the difference and do, do we care one way or the other. Anyone that embraces this lifestyle usually has a few goals in mind immediately. It's either number one, my first priority is to be profitable or my first priority is to be sustainable or my first priority is something else to just a uh, hobby farm to yeah. do, you know, to do it more just for enjoyment. All three are 100% okay. Yeah. Our first choice was to be sustainable. Uh, we were not planning on making any kind of profit. It wasn't just for fun. Our number one priority was to be sustainable. Yeah. So in, my, in our minds, and don't let me speak for you, but I'm pretty sure we believe the same thing here. Homesteading, the name, is about living off the land and being sustainable. A farm is more of the main aspect of being profitable. Right. It doesn't mean they're not still trying to be sustainable. It's just the not, not the top priority. Yeah. Um, you know, they have loads and loads of a, a herd of whatever livestock it may be. They're going to markets. They're doing stuff like that. Yeah. Um, they have 200 acres of corn that they're growing uh, so they can sell and live off of it. 100% yeah. not a thing wrong with that. That's just our second priority. Right. Um, we wanted to make sure that our family ourselves um, were sustainable before we started venturing into the profit. And have how we've had a few videos this year about trying to become profitable this year. I'm saying this year a lot, sorry. <laughs> um, is because we feel that we are 90%-ish sustainable yeah. on what we have here. So now our excess, we can start trying to make money off of. Uh, so in our eyes, that's the difference between homesteading and a farm. Right. Um, and the, the reason she said stainless steel is because the huge market farms that have, you know, 200 cows lined up on machines that are just pumping them out and it's all stainless steel. It's clean, you know, looks like a, a surgery room yeah that's what we're trying not to be yeah and then obviously those people are what make the world go round. absolutely those farmers are the ones that feed everyone they feed the whole country yep. even outside of the country uh, but that's not our goal our right. goal is to feed our family steward our land and set our kids up for the same type of life we hope that they choose because we love our life 100 percent um if you asked us any day would we go back to subdivision life or suburb life? The answer is absolutely not. And I mean, I hope our kids would say the same. I think they would. Um, but yeah, that's, those people make the world go around, but that's not who we're trying to be. Right. <laughs> we're and just it, trying to make our family go around. Exactly. And again, it's all about priority. What's the number one priority that you have? Um, and ours is the sustainable homestead yeah. wooded looking life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So to wrap it all up, um, we are very sorry if yesterday's video offended you in any way or made you think differently of us or you didn't expect us to say something like that or follow something like that. Um, and if you didn't catch the video, we'll link it in the end card at the end screen yeah. so you understand what we're talking about. Yeah, but um, if that offends you, then um, you should probably do some soul searching because that is nothing to be offended by absolutely um, and it's just a way of life it's the Appalachia way of life it's our way of life um, it's the way that we'll keep living and you know again if you don't want to follow any of that that is 100% okay you will still be a great gardener yep. um, we just choose to do it to try to have the best success possible so that we can be more sustainable that's exactly right because if you're working in a small space it's right. not just about having a good garden it's yeah. about having the best you garden have to have the best so that you can feed your family that year exactly so the more knowledge that you can gain and the more items that you can use to maybe just better your chances yeah. of having a more successful garden we're gonna choose that way yeah. um, and that's what our great-grandparents did their parents yeah. did because it was survival yeah we had to it's, it's the southern way of life it's it, just it, who we are it really is yeah uh, we always joke it's nothing to do with any other state but Kentucky yeah. and Tennessee <laughs> we'll be here before everything else yeah. um, if it comes down to it I'm not saying people don't know how to live off the land or survive but we we have the old wives tale that yeah we still believe by. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all, you can obviously tell we're very passionate about this. Um, we never want to strike a nerve with anyone whatsoever, but- Or disappoint, but yes. we also can't 
sit around and pretend like we're someone that we're not. Exactly. Um, and we do play by the signs of the moon. So <laughs> if you don't like that, we totally understand. That yep. is okay. Um, but we're, that's just who we are and what we do. That's exactly right. And appreciate our passion as we appreciate your passion yes. for what uh, you believe in as well. Is that the cat? Yeah, she's trying to find a mouse. She's in the tree house. It's going <laughs> nuts with the meows. Way to break the awkwardness, I guess. No, not awkward at all. We love you all so much. Um, we hope that you continue to follow our journey. Yeah. Um, there's going to be more weird things that pop up yeah. um, along the way. Oh, a couple superstitions I saw in there. Well, I was going to say, it. we also have loved seeing all your superstitions yeah. in the comments. Those are awesome. Definitely some that we're going to take into our lives and start practicing. Um, but yeah, thank you all for the support in the comments and sharing. Also, for those of you who do play by the signs and sharing your knowledge as well. We don't know everything. That's there's right. no way for anyone to know the whole roundabout way of planting by the signs or moons. Um, so thank you for your knowledge and making us smarter too. That's exactly right because we're always growing, we're always learning, and we never stop. Yeah. Uh, so never, kind of like with the garden video, never feel like something won't work or doesn't work unless you've tried it yourself. And yeah. even then, that was might have been one failure. It doesn't mean it fails all the time. Yep. So keep that in your mind, keep dreaming, keep learning, and keep growing every single day uh, to become survivalist and living off your land. Yep, all right, we love y'all. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. <laughs> I gotta get it add that in there. <laughs> okay. All right, we love you. We love you. Until the next one. Bye. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.